Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. There may be the odd background sound, but uh, that's because I'm in my living room, kind of walking around, rather than just sitting in a chair. And there's a helicopter outside. <laughs> it's not actually outside. There's a helicopter in the air going over the head for some reason. Andre's in the bedroom up to something. I can hear him moving around. So uh, he might make an appearance. Uh, check out the website. I did have a timetable and I've kind of got rid of it because I just I'm not good at uh, timetables a little bit too much like being at school so I'm just going to be producing new recordings when I can and rather than on any specific days this is the second one within a week so that's pretty good I think now this recording is going to be based on something that I read I've been reading this book on anxiety and stress and Well, there have been two books I've been reading actually. One's been on sleep because I do, I've got a few podcasts based on sleep, and I've got a couple that I've been reading on anxiety and stress. And there's this uh, book that has an approach called DARE, it's the Dare approach, D A R E. And I can't remember what it stands for because it's on my Kindle. My Kindle's being charged up right now, so I can't even bother to open it up and look. However, it's interesting because, well, the reason being. is it mentions something that I used to get annoyed with when I was reading books on anxiety back in the early days of experiencing it, you know, 2003 time. And I read quite a few books. Um, I also went online and you know, did a bit of research. At the same time, I was learning to meditate, which was really, really useful. So some mindfulness, walking meditation, which is what I mentioned in the last recording. And... There's something that you, they used to say in some of these books with an anxiety attack. And that is to, uh, as a, I know it's reassuring and I realise that's what they were saying. And, but the, it was very much repeated that an anxiety attack, a panic attack, won't, it won't kill you. It's not going to kill you. Chances are you may feel you're going to faint, but probably not going to faint. 
and on some level it's brilliant to hear you know it's good to hear that I'm not gonna die from this thing so you know there's, there's a a big positive from that however on the other side it seemed a little bit dismissive or a lot dismissive maybe to me at the time because I had been to the hospital thinking that I was dying and I wasn't but that's how I felt and so there's a fine line isn't there I think when you dismiss somebody's feelings even if you not meaning it in that way you know, it's not meant in a dismissive way it's meant in a caring compassionate empathic way a reassuring way but can still almost feel dismissive and I don't think anyone likes to be dismissed so I struggled a little bit with that struggled a little bit with the idea that you know just it's almost like being told don't worry about it don't worry about it when actually that kind of is exactly what's happening don't worry about worrying it's an almost a paradoxical thing isn't it stop worrying about worrying don't it's like don't think about feeling hungry just carry on preparing the food for other people don't think about your own tummy like no I'm hungry so that idea used to annoy me but on another level I understood um, that I understood it but I didn't like it I didn't like what they were saying which was basically uh, it's about acceptance and acceptance is really important and it's not like I was really young either I was th in my 30s I was 30 what 2 when this all started happening so you know, I'd, I wasn't completely oblivious to psychology or therapy or anything like that because I had been studying it. But just this was out of my, very much out of my comfort zone. So I realised I need to get to the point really, but I was reading this book, this book recently, it was a few days ago and again about acceptance and you know I agree with that and I've probably talked about it myself accepting how things are doesn't mean that it's okay you know you, acceptance is the first step maybe the second step is to do something about it to make changes and this book was saying going a step further than just it's going to be alright and no one ever dies of anxiety 
No one dies of stress. Well, no one dies from the stress feelings necessarily, but stress can cause physical illness if it's not addressed. And if someone's unhealthy, stress could lead to uh, a very difficult physical situation. So it's not completely honest to say that stress and anxiety has never killed anyone. The results of it probably have many times, but not in a panic attack kind of a way. Maybe in an unhealthy, if in an unhealthy body, someone that's very, very unhealthy for whatever reason, whether it's through illness, disease, whatever, having huge amounts of stress added on can cause heart disease, it can cause all kinds of problems. But in itself, it doesn't, you know, on its own. And it takes time for that stuff to happen. You don't just have a panic attack and then suddenly you've got a heart disease. And that's probably years of ongoing stress, which is why our body warns us. So that we don't go beyond a certain level. And the body's warning is anxiety, stress, panic, anxiety attacks. So this book, keep going back to this book. The idea, and I've been testing this out by the way, with other things as well. The idea really is to go beyond acceptance. to actually welcome it, which is the complete opposite to what anybody would want to do. So I am you know, aware of that. But the theory is this, welcome it in. Say, do your worst. Do your worst, come on. It's almost like taking on a bully. And the anxiety and panic is not bullying you. It seems like it, but it's actually there to help you. Everything that happens in your body, all the feelings you have is there as a warning or there to help you to get somewhere. Maybe a warning to let you know that you need to see a doctor or that you need to stop doing whatever it is you're doing. And being aware of that, I'm not always aware why, but there's always messages continuously, physical messages, thoughts in our mind that are saying, oh, perhaps, perhaps I don't feel... I want to do that thing and then it's judging whether or not it's you know how much of that is something to be listened to whether it is it's sabotage who knows it's a it's a big nest of complications when it comes to thoughts and thinking and stuff sometimes but this is a very simple thing welcome it in even when it's not knocking on the door, leave an open invitation for the stress, for the anxiety. An open invitation. Come on. Let's see what you got. Challenge it. Now, this can be done with pain, physical pain. And you know what happens is 
the body, the mind gets confused because when you're no longer pushing against that door trying to stop those feelings from getting through that door when you're no longer barricading that door you've literally took everything away took the locks off you've even opened the door maybe even took the door off so that those feelings can come and go as they please like a fart in the wind something changes now saying doing this is not a new idea it's a very old idea I don't know who first thought of it but it's not new it's been repackaged various times but the idea of just allowing something in is something that meditation, Buddhists, mindfulness, it's been done for thousands of years to actually accept the feeling, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional. Just accept it. But further than that, invite it, which is the opposite to the way we think because it sounds like the most preposperous, I can't say the word, it sounds nearly as preposperous, prepos, silly, that's it, preposperous, preposterous, you know the word, <laughs> can't believe I can't say a word, it's the first word I was ever able not to say, preposperous, preposperous, prepos, anyway, ridiculous thing, the idea is saying, yeah, come on then. Come on, Mr. Panic. Mrs. Stress, come on. Welcome to the party. Meet Mr. Anger and Mrs. Jealousy. Come on, you're all invited. Mr. Chronic Pain, come on. You can all come in. Welcome. Do what you want. And you know what happens is they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. I like to use the analogy of farting quite a lot in my recordings. I'm going to use this, this analogy. A fart in the lift can be awful. Or a fart in an elevator can be awful. You know, not a pleasant experience for most of the people in there, especially if you're on the way to a job interview and you don't realise that the person interviewing you was actually sitting, standing next to you on the way up to the office. But if you go to the middle of a football field and you let off the biggest fart you've ever had in your life, no one's even going to notice it. Won't cause a ripple, nothing. So, this stress, this anxiety, when we barricade that door, lock that door, don't let anything in, worry about what's the other side, all that stuff. That is like farting in a lift or an elevator, or a small enclosed room, a greenhouse maybe. But when you open that door, unbarricade it, unlock it, take the door off the hinges, just leave it, leave the gap, the doorway, just leave it open. It's like going to the middle of a football field and letting rip the biggest, Smelliest far ever has no effect. And you can have 30, 40 people standing in that field farting, nothing. Because of the area, 
because of the space you've given yourself space you've given yourself room and you've invited it in you said it's an open invitation come on in you come what are you going to do now and that's right I ain't going to do nothing because they can't do nothing because they can't do nothing is because it's you this is all you you're the person you know this isn't outside of you this is you whether it's jealousy, anger, stress, anxiety, love, laughter, joy, whatever. It's you. It's just feelings, a part of you. And you just let them in. Allow them to come and go as they please. And whatever feelings you feel, breathe them in. Let them be there. Invite them to get stronger. Come on then. Is that all you got? Come on, give me more. Give me more. Come on, more. And I made a reference to a bully. And it's not really a good reference because not really bullying ourselves because we don't mean to. But if you do the analogy of a bully, you say to a bully, come on then. Can you bully me a bit more? Come on then. What else you got? What else you got? Come on got a bit more come on come on bully boy what else you got give me your best and the stress almost seems to just evaporate the fear seems to just disappear And it's freeing. So freeing. And reading that book reminded me of something that I kind of already knew. But I think what it is with why I like reading books is because you can read the same subject. You can read 20 different versions of the same topic and learn something new from each one. Just the way it's maybe described differently from a different angle, from a different perspective, from a new pair of eyes. Which is why I make so many recordings because I like to go from different perspectives, different angles and hope that something will be useful. Whether it's mindfulness, walking, uh, medit you know, walking meditation, or whether it's relaxation exercises whether it's just changing the way that you think about yourself changing the way that you react
just saying, yeah, come on then. Bring it on. Make it stronger. Make it stronger if you want. Come on, see what's see what you got. And that goes against anxiety. It goes against it is practically impossible. For the two to mix together. Because nobody wants an anxiety attack. Nobody wants it. So when you say, come on, bring it. Your mind and your body doesn't know what to do. Because that is not the right response. It's not the response your mind is used to. It's illogical. It does not make sense. It confuses the feelings. It's, it's almost like a pattern interrupt, which you would find in, you know, like a psychology kind of situation, where you break, you interrupt someone's pattern when they're trying to, let's say, tell you their telephone number, or, yeah, maybe tell you, or. They're going to read you a paragraph of a book that they had learnt. So, they would, you know, they'd learnt it off by heart. And they're going to read you this paragraph. And they get through two sentences, three sentences. And you interrupt them by saying, sorry about that, might need to open the window. Carry on good chances they're going to have to start right at the beginning again because you interrupted but this is an even bigger pattern interrupt than that this is on a level that well it's just a different level just the idea of going from barricading that door I know this isn't physically barricading the door but with that fear of those feelings they're just feelings but that fear turn into unbarricade unlock take the door off the hinges come on then come in all of you, come in. Let's see what you got. Welcome them. I want you welcoming. You kind of don't want to stay because there's no point to them anymore. There's a reason we stop eating when we're, when we're, you know, we're full up, we stop eating because there's no point eating anymore. The job is done. And that's kind of how things are. And it's something that you can test yourself, as I have. And you can test it with different things. Because it's not just feelings of stress or anxiety because there's so many other things maybe connected to that. 
feelings of anger, feelings of resentment, feelings of jealousy, feelings of whatever. It's just so many different feelings, isn't there? Regret, rejection, whatever. So the more things we push away because they are painful, they can be very painful. But they're more painful the longer you leave it. And more painful if you don't allow yourself to experience it. It's, the, it's just the equivalent really, logically, of the difference between a, a dripping tap on the top of your head just a tiny little bit of water every 30 seconds or a bar full of water poured over the top of your head once every five hours or once a day you know, whatever it is I'd rather just have the dripping tap although that would be a little bit annoying to have a whole bath of water poured over you is a lot more to contend with than just a drip. So what I'll say is give it a go if you want to. Invite those feelings, whatever they are. Invite them. say come on and just feel it realising that it's just feelings and the more you experience whatever's happening now the healthier you'll be physically and emotionally because it doesn't build up won't cause damage to your body or to your mind long term which untreated anxiety and stress can have as we all know have a, a big effect and part of the reason why people have anxiety and panic attacks is because they have ignored the stress levels that they were at I know I did So maybe it's now time to invite those stress levels. Not the stress levels, but just the stress. Because the levels will actually reduce. Because all you have is the drip. Not the big bath poured over your head. Bath full of it. Just the drip. A small amount which is almost, eventually it's almost non, it's like it's not even there. What you can notice is the feeling of relaxation. You can feel the, notice the sensation of feeling calmer within yourself as a person, mentally, physically, emotionally calmer more at ease more relaxed so I'm going to leave you with that and I shall speak to you next time remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love